Hello, everybody. Ray Pedrosa for ExploreMcCallan.com. Nothing says happy birthday, America, more than a great American cookout. And that's what we're doing right here in the backyard, having a great cookout. And we brought the big gun, Chef James Cantor from Alhambra Restaurant and Bar. Thanks hey. so much for, for being here today. Uh, thanks for bringing me out, Ray. I'm looking forward to uh, cooking out today. You know what? Everybody thinks of the traditional fajitas, uh, beans and rice for, for, for a grill out. And that's that's great Which and wonderful. Which isn't that bad. But you, you have some other great ideas. Well, yeah, I have a, a few little health-minded ideas for, uh, you know, your your traditional 4th of July celebration. Um, you know, at Alhambra, we try to use all locally grown and locally raised organic and uh, really try to keep, um, you know, the, the health-minded um, theme at the front, the forefront of what we do, uh, with also keeping within the theme of, you know, the Alhambra um, Palace in Granada, Spain, the cultural crossroads of, you know, cuisine, as, as we put it, or culture, or what, what have you. But uh, what, to, what we're going to do today is basically we're going to do uh, skewers. You know, uh, skewers were actually um, uh, an influence brought to the global cuisine scene, so to speak, by uh, the, the Moors. And the Moors are the, uh, the, the people that uh, built the, Spain, the, the palace in Granada, Spain. So we're going to stay within the Alhambra theme and do um, skewers today. Uh, we're going to do a, a wild Alaskan king salmon skewer. It's marinated in a little Middle Eastern spice. And we're also going to do a uh, locally raised Akaushi beef skewer, um, which is raised on the McAllen Ranch. It's 45 miles away from here. Great heart healthy beef, low in saturated fats, uh, just a wonderful, wonderful product that we serve at the restaurant. That's also going to be marinated in a Middle Eastern type uh, marinade, which is uh, pomegranate syrup, a little bit of uh, black pepper and garlic, and olive oil, of course. Um, we're going to serve that on a riff of, uh, of guacamole that I like to do at the restaurant every now and then. It's uh, called a grilled guacamole salad. So uh, we're going to go ahead and um, put that together. I can't, I, wait get... to, I can't wait to sample all of this stuff. Awesome. I'll uh, let the master get right to work. Well, thanks. I see all you right. got the, the grill rolling it for me. Hot. Appreciate it. it. You did the hard ready work. ready to go. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, what we got here today, I got a couple of um, vegetables and um, fruits here that we're going to go ahead and prepare to uh, start the grill. I have some wonderful avocados right here, large Haas avocados. Great um, source of um, uh, natural fat. Uh, it's also um, high in omega-3s from what I understand and it's just a really good fruit to, uh, to be involved with if you're keeping health in mind. Uh, it is uh, a little heavy in the calorie area, but you know, it's, uh, it's, good. it's a good fat. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these guys and I'm gonna cut them in half. And what we're gonna do is while those are in half, we are going to go ahead and place them right on the grill, just like that. All right, so you're putting the, the avocados face down. How, uh -huh. how, how long do you leave them down like that? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna leave them down until it starts to get some smokiness from the uh, charcoals. Uh, get some nice color on it, some caramelization, and uh, we're just gonna leave them there and then pull them off when uh, when we get those uh, two items in mind. Okay. Um, and then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take some um, beautiful heirloom tomatoes. These are also locally grown in Cameron County. Uh, you can use any kind of tomatoes you want. Um, you know, just something in season that's always gonna be better. We're just gonna get a nice um, thick cut on these guys. Real nice and chunky. We're gonna go ahead and place these on the grill also. And for about how many minutes or just, just, just a until visual they, like, test? Like, until they get some color and some uh, flavor once again, you're gonna look at probably about, you know, I'd say approximately three to four minutes on the vegetables and about the same on the skewers. So while those are grilling off, we're also gonna take some of these onions, and these are locally grown organic um, bulb onions. And these things are great. We, uh, we use these a lot at the restaurant. So we're basically, what we're doing is we're preparing today um, all the typical ingredients that you would find in a uh, guacamole, but we're grilling it. And I like to um, actually leave the greens on the outside so that you don't get too much charring. You want to cook the bulbs, you want them to be soft, but you don't want the greens to be ruined. You don't want them to uh, look all nasty and stuff. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple more tomato slices. And what kind of tomato did you say that is? These are heirloom tomatoes, and basically heirloom uh, variety is 
a variety that is um, an old an old variety. It's uh, one of the original seeds. It hasn't been spliced or um, kind of um, muddied. It's gene pool muddied, so to speak. So these are the original tomatoes um, from the seed. Very flavorful. These are this is a brandy wine, and I believe this is a uh, yellow box car. That's the names. They have some pretty colorful names. Uh, chili poblano. Just cut it in half. Put that on the hottest part of the grill because we want to get some uh, quick charring on that. Um, I'm going to take some uh, some fresh herbs. I like to use a lot of fresh herbs in cooking at the uh, restaurant, so um, I'm going to take some fresh herbs and kind of marinate and brush the items with it. And what are you using? This is fresh thyme. This is fresh thyme. This is fresh rosemary. This is all uh, locally grown Texas. Texas herbs. Um, right about now, we look towards the north, um, the north of the valley, to get a lot of our herbs and our more delicate greens because uh, it's just too hot here right now. That smells really good. Thanks, thanks. That's the essential oils in the um, in the herbs coming out with the uh, the rest of the uh, the heat. And, and what are you adding right there? Just a little extra virgin olive oil. And now what we're going to do while that's grilling, we're going to go ahead and take our our marinated uh, salmon, king salmon right here, which is already on skewers. We're just gonna go ahead and add, um, first of all, we're going to go ahead and uh, move the, the avocados a little bit. So everything's uh, cooking very nice. It's smelling really good, can't wait to try it. And uh, let's see, we're gonna go ahead and take our king salmon and we're gonna put that on the edge here. Get that sizzle going. And why, why is it uh, the trick to put them here on the edge? Uh, well, you don't want the, um, the skewers to char. Um, what you can also do is you can uh, actually soak the skewers. And sometimes you can actually soak the skewers in a flavored liquid so that you actually get some flavor uh, that it's imparted from the skewer to the product that you're actually skewering. These are just plain wooden, ba or actually bamboo skewers at this point because I think uh, what we're already cooking has a lot of flavor in it with that king salmon and you know the marinade. Here's the Akaushi beef. We used a different type of skewer with these guys, a little shorter, so we can just put those right on the grill. Now there's a lot of sugars in these uh, marinades, so uh, these are natural sugars, so you wanna um, be very mindful when you're grilling. I bet people ask you all the time, are your recipes online? Where, where can they find? Uh, well, if, usually we um, have them online or we'll share them at our farmer's market every Saturday. Uh, or you can just come in and ask for James and if you see something you like, ask me and I can give you a, a recipe of what we're doing. And for people who have not been to the farmer's market, it is at Lambda, downtown McAllen. What's the address? It's uh, 519 South 17th Street at the corner of Fresno and 17th. And uh, the farmer's market happens every Saturday from 10 to 1. Is, is that all year long or is that it seasonal? Is, that is all year long. We just went all year long this this season. We had planned on going um, going strictly for the uh, seasonal, but we had such a great um, a great response from our farmers market. People wanted it all year long. Along. So now we got the uh, skewers going. We have the all the veggies for the guacamole salad going. Um, everything's looking really well. We're just gonna let it do its magic at this point. I'm gonna grab a spoon, um, which I, I think I have a spoon right here. Thank you, Ray, appreciate it. Now, just like I said, you can, um, you can switch up the recipe as much as you like. You can use different types of tomatoes, different types of meats on the skewers. You can do shrimp, which are awesome. You can do, um, you know, you can do scallops, you can do uh, pork. I mean, you're only limited by your own creativity when it comes to you know, cooking in general. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, go for it, man. We're, we're using charcoal today to grill with, but what, what do you prefer using as you your know, I like I like a mix. I like charcoal and, uh, and hardwood. Uh, usually a fruit tree is what I like. I, in Florida, I use a lot of orange, uh, but I use a lot of apple wood. Mesquite is great here. Mesquite, though, you gotta be very careful when you're cooking vegetables because it really is gonna uh, take over the flavor of that vegetable, that mesquite, because they're, mesquite's a very pronounced uh, flavor and aroma. So um, if you're gonna use mesquite, 
soak it really well, use it in small, small quantities when it comes to, um, to the vegetables. So now what we got here, we have um, the vegetables are just about finished. We're gonna go ahead and flip these skewers. And this really is a very quick application. Um, you know, if, you know, all the time is in the, um, in the prep. So once you have everything prepped, you can kind of get the grill going, sit back and have a drink or, you know, enjoy some time with your family and just kind of hang out and uh, relax. And then when it's time to eat, pop it on, within 10 minutes you have a meal. Pretty easy. And then after that, you can head out to the fireworks at Municipal Park in McAllen. Absolutely. <laughs> so, what we're going to do is I'm going to bring the avocados over here. So you got some beautiful color on these avocados now. Nice and blistered. And so when you pick your avocados, you, you want them to be uh, firm, or, or how, how do you pick your, your avocados? You want them to be uh, semi-firm. You want a little bit of give. Um, nothing too mushy and nothing too hard. So you want right between right between those um, that criteria. Um, what I usually do is um, I'll, I'll put my hand together like this, and if that's usually about, <clears throat> about the feel, feeling of a ripe avocado right there. If it gives that much, then uh, it's good for guacamole. If it gives that much, the next finger over, it's good for grilling. Same with steaks. It's, it's a trick that's, uh, that's rare, that's medium rare, that's medium, that's well done. If you feel that. Kinda, Learned a new trick. Kind of interesting. <laughs> <clears throat> so spatula. Let's see, I'll use this guy. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take our tomatoes off. And these here are like, uh, they're starting to get a little soft. They have a nice smoky aroma to them at this point. Um, that's when they're done. That's when you're gonna wanna take them off. You don't want these to get too uh, mushy. You still wanna keep a little bit of the integrity of the tomato. How different is the taste on those uh, compared to just a regular tomato? Well, you know, it, um, it's uncomparable to uh, out-of-season tomatoes. I mean, if you're, if you're eating a tomato um, out-of-season in, com in, in comparison to in-season, it's, it's night and day. It's, at, it's completely different. Um, I, I know I grew my own this season, and uh, olive oil, salt, and pepper, that's all it took to, uh, to make a meal with the tomatoes I grew. Nothing like those cardboard ones you find in the grocery store in the middle of winter, you know? But these ones, in particular, opposed to regular variety tomatoes, these tend to be a little bit more um, sweeter, robust, uh, a lot more juicier. Um, some of the more popular ones are the um, Cherokee Purples, um, the brandy wines. Um, those have a lot of flavor to them. Um, you know, every variety has its own attributes. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just basically gonna take the um, bulb onions that we grilled. They're nice and tender now. Still got the integrity of the green on the onion tail there. And we're going to go ahead and place those onto the salad, or the tomatoes, I'm sorry. Let's do the poblanos first. And we're going to take the seed out of those, like so. And then we're just gonna give them a quick, rough chop, just like so. And then what we're gonna do with that afterwards Going to spread it out across the um, across the tomatoes. So right now we basically have the ingredients of a um, you know we're starting to build a guacamole salad. If you look at the ingredients, these are all traditional ingredients in most guacamoles. Uh, you have the avocado, you have the tomato, you have the chili, you have a little bit of onion, um, and we'll finish with a little cilantro. Now with the avocados, what I like to do <clears throat> once I take them from their uh, from their shell. I basically keep them kind of whole. And um, that way it has a nice, um, well put together presentation. It's not um, your typical guacamole, uh, a little something different off the beaten path, which is what we like to do at the restaurant. We like to keep our guests guessing. 
a little bit, but we also like to tie in uh, something familiar. Now, in the, one of the um, other episodes that we did, we made a vinaigrette, and you know, we also made a vinaigrette for this actual application too, and it still holds true. It's uh, three to one. It's three, three parts uh, olive oil to one part acid or vinegar. So what we did today, we have a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of fresh tarragon, and extra virgin olive oil, some garlic, and some shallots that we're putting into a um, into a vinaigrette. And I had already done that ahead of time. The magic of uh, TV. You now have a vinaigrette, which is right here. We'll go ahead and give that a stir. And I just like to drizzle it, just barely drizzle it over the whole business there. That's gonna flavor up everything and bring a nice sweet note and balance to what we're doing here. Um, without masking the actual um, ingredients. Right here I have a little fresh watercress. I, I like to put in there to give it a nice peppery balance. This offers um, a little pepperiness, a little bit of a, a stringency to the, um, to the dish so it's not all um, creamy and tart. And then of course a little bit of of a refreshing aspect to the salad too by adding a few sprigs of cilantro and that would be your guacamole salad right voila there, That's there that. it is and you know very helpful minded um, you know good way to eat your veggies um, and it's also sticking with the um, with the July theme so now what we're gonna do because uh, man or woman can't live off saddle salad alone we're gonna do some nice king salmon skewers, which have been pre-marinated. These can be marinated overnight too. Uh, the more you marinate them, the stronger they're gonna take on that marinade flavor. And the, the trick is in the marinade. How, what do you use to marinate them? Well, you know, I like to use, it all depends on what I'm, what I'm cooking precisely, but um, this is beef. Um, I like to give it a slightly sweet flavor with a little bit of heat to it. Um, so what we did is basically uh, Worcester shoe sauce. Try saying that real fast yeah. five times. Worcester shoe sauce. <laughs> and uh, a little bit of um, pomegranate syrup, which is very typically Middle Eastern. Uh, some chili, uh, Korean cracked chili flake. And um, a bee pollen. I actually used uh, fresh, uh, uh, locally, locally harvested bee pollen here in, in the dish also. That so, looks very nice. So this would be um, the uh, Akuhushi beef, marinated in pomegranate syrup and bee pollen. And then this here is the wild Alaskan king salmon, marinated in a, a spice they call zatar spice, which basically in Farsi means um, thyme. So it's thyme and sesame seeds have been rubbed and ground up, and a little bit of sumac, which is um, indigenous in, um, in the Middle East. It also grows in North America. It's a uh, a berry that's ground up that's used in lieu of of a lemon. It has a nice pungent flavor to it. it tastes almost lemony. Uh, so we marinated the, the salmon in that. And that would be um, that would be your gr grilled guacamole and uh, skewers. Wow, looks uh, very appetizing. Can't wait to try that out. Sure. If uh, people would like to, uh, can they go visit with you there at the Lombard as well if they want to know more about your recipes? Absolutely, I'm pretty accessible. Um, when, whenever I'm there, if I'm not out doing some research and development to, to better uh, better our, our menu standing at the restaurant, I'm usually pretty much entrenched at the restaurant. So uh, if I'm not tied to the grill, you know, I'll come out and say hi and uh, help you out with whatever uh, whatever your needs are. and be able to give you a few tips if, if necessary. We like it when you do research and <laughs> development because we get to taste it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chef James, thank you so much. Shall we uh, chow now? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it was a pleasure to cook for you and uh, cook for your crew. And uh, it's a pleasure to show, uh, show McAllen what we like to do on 4th of July at, at Alhambra and at, at the farmer's market and at the Canner House, actually. You're welcome so. to come cook for us anytime you want. Okay, it's just in the shade next time, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> happy 4th of July. Uh, it's a pleasure. Thank and happy 4th of July to you out there as well. Thank you for watching. I'm Ray Pedraza for ExploringCalendar.com.